Thank you for visiting my channel, Medical Assistant with Ms. K. I am a medical assistant instructor. I teach both clinical and administrative assistant courses. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to be giving some tips, some of my top tips on passing your certification exams. And this is whether you're taking the CCMA, CMAA, CMA or RMA, any certification exam, okay? These are gonna be my top tips. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you've been watching my exam um, practice videos, then some of this you have already heard. But if this is your first time watching me, welcome again. Definitely check out my exam practice videos. My first tip is that you should have access to the study material for the exam you'll be taking. So if you're taking a CCMA or the CMAA, you should be on NHA's website, right? You should have access to the study guide as well as the, the practice test. Why? Because you need to become familiar with the material, okay? If you're taking a CMA or RMA, you should be on, for RMA, you should be on AMT's website and CMA, you should be on um, AAMA's website because you need to familiarize yourself with the content. You should be going through the study guides as well as taking the practice test that they have available for you. Now, depending on your school, they should provide it for you, right? Um, most schools will do that for you. Most schools that I know of, I know every school that I've worked at, we provided the study materials for you. But I know that some of you attend some schools that don't provide anything for you, and that's okay. It just means that you're going to have to buy it yourself, unfortunately, but it's an investment. It's an investment into your future, right? Because once you get certified, you're certified for good. You don't have to take the test again unless you let it expire. So once you take the test this one time, all you have to do is just keep up with the certification. So you want to get access to the practice test and the study guides. Make sure once you get those practice tests and study guides, you have a pen and paper. Why? Because you want to take notes. You're going to be taking notes on things that may not be so familiar to you, right? Maybe you learned it at one point in school, but then you forgot it. Or maybe you'll see some things that you never saw before. So you want to take notes on those things, right? As you're going through the practice test, I always say, pay attention to the wrong answers, right? Because if they, that wrong answer is an option, it may be on the test, right? So if you see a question that says, you know, which of the following conditions um, could the patient be experiencing or about to experience if they're feeling faint? Um, if they're feeling um, dizzy and lightheaded, right? You may see syncope, you'll see stroke, seizure, myocardial infarction, which is heart attack. And then once you choose the correct answer, which is syncope, at least, which is fainting, you'll also see the, the signs and symptoms of myocardial infarction, seizure, stroke, all those options. So that way, if you see any of those in the, in, on the test, you know what those are. So pay attention to wrong answers. I say this on every single one of my videos. The thing too, with the study guide and practice test, um, you wanna make sure you go through the, every single part of the study guide, right? I usually recommend, and I use NHA as an example because that's the website that I have access to, but the same thing goes for if you're on an AMT website or AMA, right? You wanna go through the entire study guide, right? And then take your practice test. With NHA, you get six practice tests altogether. So you go through the study guide, you take your practice test, and you want to see your score go up with each practice test, right? So when you take your practice test, um, you want to um, look at the, the the areas where you fell short. It'll show you where you fell short. And then you want to go back to that area on a study guide, review that again, right? And then take your test again. Each time your score should be getting higher and higher. That is the goal. And as I always say, do not look for the exact questions that you see on the test, on the practice test. Don't look for those same questions. Every now and then you might, somebody might see the same question, but for the most part, the questions are not the same. Pay attention to the content, study the actual content. Like I mentioned before, those wrong answers, studying those two, that's studying the content. That's making sure you can answer questions in an open-ended type of way. The last couple study sessions I did, I did open-ended questions because if you can answer those questions, you know you know the information. If you can answer it without seeing it, if I was to ask you what does HIPAA stand for and you know it, you can tell me without seeing an option. If I was to ask you how many provisions does HIPAA have and you can tell me without seeing an option for it, you know you know it, right? If I if I ask you what is the... um. Um, general duty clause to OSHA say, what is that? You know, be able to answer questions, right? 
open-ended questions and that's how you know that you know the material somebody asked me how do i know i'm really ready that's one of the ways is knowing that you know the information when someone asks you another thing you want to do set your study times and your days okay set out map out like so if you see on your study guide right like for an example like I know in NHA for the CCMA study guide, like if there's pharmacology, you have um, anatomy and physiology. Like you might say, you know what? Monday between two to four, I'm gonna focus on um, pharmacology. And then Monday that evening, I'm gonna focus on anatomy and physiology or um, microbiology or whatever. So set your study days and times. That way you know what you're studying and on which day. And I always say your life should be revolving around this stuff before you, as you're approaching your test, right? So if you're taking your test next week or next month or whatever, up until that point, you need to have sticky pads with notes on it. You need to have a app on your phone. You need to have your Google Drive on your phone, that app on your phone, whatever you're using as a study guide or whatever, you need to have that in front of you because you should constantly be feeding your mind and keeping this in front of you so you know it and absorb it and not trying to memorize it, okay? And then the last thing I would say is that for each of these tests, no matter which certification exam you're taking, you definitely need to be on point with your um, terminology. Make sure you're able to recognize body parts, right? You know, you guys, I mentioned that I've been, been doing one-on-ones. I, I opened up to do one-on-one -on -one sessions and I've had a couple of sessions and I was kind of quizzing a couple of the people that I've talked to and I've realized they didn't know certain body parts, right? So you want to be able to recognize your organs, right? You should know that um, that renal and nephro is kidney. You should know that um, cervical is neck or um, encephalo is brain, stuff like that. Like you should know that stuff. So be able to recognize those body parts and your organs, right? And you should know your common suffixes, right? You should be able to know ectomy, otomy, ostomy, the difference between those, synthesis. You should know your prefixes, micro, macro, hyper, hypo, things like that, endo, peri, intra, enter. You you need to make sure you know those things, right? Because terminology, a lot of times, for some of those questions, you're going to be able to answer just because you know terminology, right? You want to make sure you know um, how to convert, you know, your pounds to kilograms and vice versa, Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa. You want to make sure you know um, inches to feet and vice versa, inches to centimeters and vice versa. You want to make sure you know your ranges for your blood work, for potassium, for sodium, glucose, um, hematocrit, and hemoglobin. And you got to know for hematocrit and hemoglobin, the male and female ranges, right? You want to make sure you know those abbreviations, PRN, AC, HS, um, CBC, things like that. You want it. There's just, these are just some of the foundational things that I'm mentioning. I'm going to do a separate video actually, and I'm going to break down pretty much everything, all of the um, categories that you need to know and things that you need to be studying. Now, some of the stuff that I mentioned, if you know you don't know that, that's what you need to go to like today, like now when you finish this video and start studying, because those are going to be those things that you need, that you need to know. You need to be able to, you need to know um, what a UA is, you know, certain um, common tests um, that you may have to do in the doctor's office, right? You need to know what HIPAA stands for, the standards of OSHA, what is the patient's bill of rights, right? Be able to know um, different things that falls within uh, the patient's bill of rights, right? You need to know um, what an AOB is, an assignment of benefits, EOB, explanation of benefits, COB, coordination of benefits. You need to know what those are. You need to know the difference between the CPT code and the ICD-10 code, right? So these are just some of the basic things, those foundational things that you need to know for any of those tests, right? And this is why it's so important to take the study, to, to get access to the study guide and take those practice tests because the CMA and RMA exams are so much broader than a CCMA. You know, I cover these things, but you may miss out on some things that's going to be on a CMA and RMA because those exams are, are broader, okay? But the foundational stuff that I'm going to give you is going to be foundational stuff for all of those tests. But still, make sure you still um, get access to that material. If you don't have it yourself, ask your school. If you fail the test, make sure you go to your school for help, right? At my school, we have to work with the students to try to get them to pass. So if you find yourself, you pay, you fail the test and you need help, you know, um, I get a lot of that. What should I do? First thing you want to do is go to your school for assistance, okay? As I mentioned before, when you guys pass your exams, 
that's a that's that's a positive thing for the school it looks good on the school because it shows a you know, the higher the passing rates, the more, you know, marketable the school is, the more they'll qualify for certain things. So they care about you passing, okay? So go to your school for help. Watch videos like my study sessions, look up other videos for CMA, RMA, or CCMA, CMAA, Quizlet, just be careful on Quizlet because like I said, Quizlet, I said this before, Quizlet, you know, those are people putting those answers on there and they could be wrong. So just be careful with stuff like that. So like I said, I'll do another video where I go more into some of those foundational things that I mentioned and I'll do a terminology video as well. So, um, and leave down below any other, you know, video suggestions or questions or comments. You can leave that down below. You can also email me. That'll be listed down below. So I hope this video was at least a little helpful. I know some of this stuff you have heard me say before. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my other exam practice videos. Okay. And subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Thank you again for visiting my channel. Be blessed.